is half drie, hy is ingeskakel op Melute FM 97.1, program Sand in die Eerglas en ek is Emma Ransvuri, jou gasvrou tot en met vier uur vanmiddag. Nou vanmiddag het ons een speciale gas in die atelier, hierdie week is het nie een telefoniese onderhoud nie. So in our lifestyle insert today we are chatting to Mr. David Henderson and he is visiting from the Cape. Dove, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. It's good to be in the in the heart of the control center and see how everything happens. It's uh, quite technical. I want to start pushing buttons all of a sudden. <laughs> well, it's such an honor to have you here today. So, what are your impressions of the Eastern Free State? How's your heart? It's it's uh, it's got potholes, which is <laughs> which is frustrating, but it's been beautiful. I won't lie. So, the drive up here, I drove into one of my first th- uh, first thunderstorms in the last maybe year or two. So Cape Town is blessed with many things, but uh, thunder is not one of them. So it was really good to actually hit a bit of thunder and unfortunately some hail, but uh, still take the good with the bad. Huh? Well, so each week we do an interview with Dave from my ebooks. It's a publishing company. And this week he's turned the tables and he wants to know more about bookstores and how it's run. So Dave, you turned the table on me today. I'm a bit nervous. I've never been interviewed. So yeah. Good. I'm going to hand it over to you. I've got you now and I'm going to uh, uncomfortably sort of uh, chat with you about what it is you do outside of the studio. So um, I don't know if the readers know a huge amount about you, but uh, something I found out early on is that in uh, in a small town, uh, Clarence, I suppose everyone knows Clarence, right? We don't have to explain it to your listeners. Um, There is a a very, uh, very quaint uh, little bookstore that you happen to be in charge of. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about your bookstore and tell us about uh, why it got started and what your plans with it are. Well, I was actually trying to give up my antique shop, you know, and pursue my dreams. And while I did that, uh, the opportunity came by to open a new quaint little bookshop. So, yeah, I decided to take the chance. I'm a very impulsive person, (laughs) by the way. So, as you know, everyone was... Everyone knew that I was busy moving, and the next moment they heard I'm opening up a new shop. So I think it was a sort of a surprise for everyone. Uh, but the bookshop is actually amazing. I combined it with a few LP records as well. Yeah. And, you know, you meet the most amazing people coming to the shop every day, and I think that's the most enticing thing about it. Yeah. No, it's In my world of publishing, you know, the bookstore is the foundation. That's what everyone knows. That's where everyone grew up. You know, that's where the memories were formed where you used to visit the neighborhood bookstore, you know, and spend time inside. And maybe they had a coffee section where you could grab a cup of coffee. And so bookstores hold that beautiful place in our memories where that's where we grew up. And uh, as much as we're going digital nowadays, I don't think we'll ever truly lose, you know, that feeling of the bookstore. Not at all. And so that's why I was so excited to get you uh, in the studio today because it, it – I don't often chat with someone from the other end of the spectrum, you know, the paper end of, the, of books. Generally, I'm chatting with, you know, people involved in tech and the more um, technical side of ebooks. So it's, it's really cool to have someone who, who sees the other side, you know, that, that touch and the feel, which is often what people say when they tell you they'll never, you know, work with an ebook uh, is because of that tactile feeling of, of the book, the smell of the book. So I thought, while I've got you, Danzi, I wanted to uh, pop a couple questions. You're and um, one of the first questions that came to mind was, now this bookstore that you have, I want you to run me through what a typical day can be like for you from beginning to end. What, uh, what typically keeps you busy? Well, Clarence, you know, is visited by so many people. And it's amazing, you know, you meet every day. As soon as you open the bookstore, there's so many people coming in. Each and everyone is looking for something else. And yes, it's just amazing to meet them. You know, if we don't have the book in store, we would always recommend them to another bookstore. Uh, You know, Clarence has got lovely bookstores. I don't know if you've ever been to the Bibliophile, and yeah, even Bruce has got a stunning bookshop. And that's how we do it. You know, you recommend them to someone else. If we don't have it in stock, then we also take down their name and number. And then if we should happen to find it, then we would contact them and yeah, send the book to them. Um, typical day, sometimes you set yourself up, you think you're going to redo all the shelves, you know, list the authors. But no, then you start chatting. And that's what life's all about, all the experience that you get. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting what you're saying, because what I'm picking up is there's a lot of connection happening 
And I think in these crazy times of not being able to see people and meet people and get out enough and, you know, with all the stress and anxiety that comes from being locked up for too long, I think a bookstore actually can play that role. You know, it can play the role of, of meeting up with people. Now, fair enough, you're going to have, you know, your masks on, well, you should have. And, um, but it's such a great place to actually meet people. And, and it's typically a place where you might want to just pop open a book and sit on a chair and actually start reading. So it's a spot for you to relax, but it's a spot that really fosters human connection. And I think in a time like we are now, that's probably more important than ever, I can imagine. You know, we have so many people coming there from Joburg and from Cape Town, Durban, all over. And the free status tend to be very hospitable. You know, we're friendly. We ask you how your day is. At first, they'll look at you, but strange, you know, to think... You know, why is she so friendly? But that's how we are. The free state is like that. The free state is like that. And I'm uh, I'm betting if you ever get any visitors from Durban, the first thing they're going to do when they walk into the store is ask for discount. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Dave, we're going to take a music break and then you can continue with all your questions. Die program stand in die eerglas en ek is jou gastvrou Emerans voor u en by my in die atelier vandag is Dave Henderson. Nou hy die tafels omgedraai, Dave, you're asking me some questions today. I am, I've got my little black book in front of me where I've scribbled out a few uh, a few questions to put you on the spot for your listeners. So one of the questions I had is obviously with the digital revolution in reading, meaning I can get a book now through an e-book, I can download to my uh, to my phone, to my device, there's audio books as well where I can listen. I can listen on my devices uh, while I wash dishes, which is normally how I do it. What were you thinking when you opened the store, knowing that this sort of revolution was happening, you know, happening quietly in the background? What thought did you give that? Did it change your mind? Did you worry about it at all? I must admit, not at all, because books will always be a part of your life. You know, people coming into the bookshop, they either come there to buy a book that is. Um, just for reading or otherwise it was a prescribed book you know in school and they've got all these memories do you know Dave there's a saying that if you live you only live for one life but if you read you live a thousand lives unless you believe in reincarnation well it's magical you know (laughs) I believe in magic so yeah Okay, well, I believe in magic too. And, and, and the next question uh, is, is absolutely magical. Uh, tell us about your book sold on a, a very good day or a very bad day. What are the averages? How many books might you sell? Well, it's interesting. You know, if you go to exclusive books, your new Wilbur Smith books can be like 350, 395. But I do sell secondhand books, so my books are a lot cheaper. Some days you'll sell two books. Some days you'll sell a whole shelf you know you can never say but it's amazing people that come they are actually addicted to books and they'll tell you about you know all the shelves in the house and what they used to love I had a guy in yesterday that collected Wilbur Smith he actually collects the hardcover as well as the softcover and also if it's been re-edited he will always also buy another book wow yeah that is uh, very impressive um, so Speaking of Wilbur Smith, tell me about the authors that you normally sell a lot of or the most of if there's a clear-cut winner. Well, everyone is different. So I'll get the ladies who love the mystery, you know, the suspense. And then you get the ones that ask for Daniel Steele. You know, they, they love the romance. I actually had two couples in that were like honeymoon couples. And the first thing they ask, give me something that's romantic. So oh, wow. I went to the shelf and I got one, uh, Nora Roberts. Accidentally, when I took it out, I saw your, the, the name was Happily Ever After, so I was very glad about that. And then you get your guys that um, they actually just go for thrillers. You know, they love to have that, like Patricia Cornwell or the new James Patterson. Mm. Yeah. It does correspond exactly to what uh, the stats from Amazon say when it comes to digital books as well. That your best move is online if you are an author looking to, you know, publish into a busy category. The busiest categories happen to be the romance, you know, happen to be the uh, the thrillers, the mysteries. And that's why uh, a good business decision is often writing, you know, short romance reads. You know, it's, it sounds obvious and frustrating, but there's such a built-in audience, you know, waiting for you on the other side that if you knock out a, uh, you know, a small novelette, you know, which can be around, you know, 15 to 25,000 words, your um, your time to complete something like that is actually fairly short, but the amount of potential interest from readers globally is huge. And so you often find that it's it's these authors with several romance stories out who can actually afford to, uh, to write full-time. 
as opposed to writing that one you know nonfiction book which takes you a couple years. But generally, uh, most uh, countries actually fiction sells better than nonfiction. In South Africa, obviously, we just happen to reverse that trend a bit. Well, it's interesting. You know, I've got ladies in Bethlehem who are nurses who work at the hospital. So they go and shift at 7 at night, and then they leave the next morning by 7. So their favorite is Mills and Boone, you know, Mills the and romance. Boone, yeah. and, Mills and Boone. Yeah, and Barbara Cartland. Well, I really don't like to stock them, but I do have to keep them in the shop for them. I sell them very cheaply, 15 rand. But it's just enough, you know, to go to work, read that, and by the next morning you're finished. I think I, think I grew up... Seeing Mills and Boone on my family's countertops, um, I don't think it was my dad reading it, but I'm pretty sure my mom used to go through quite a few uh, back in the days of going to the you know the the local library. So um, so yeah, it is it is sometimes frustrating as an author, um, you know, where you write something that take it's it's intense and it takes it could take years, for example, to see authors who write fiction um, are, are sometimes geared up for success more from the start. Because there's a lot more eyes in your category than you know the other nonfiction categories, and so one of the first one of the first measures of success for an author is decided before you even finish your book, and that's obviously what category you chose. Because if you live in South Africa, you'd make I won't say the mistake, but you might be releasing a a bit of nonfiction, let's say political, because we love that stuff. We eat up the political books, but that doesn't really move numbers out the country, you know. So it's 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 good for you know, for local sales, but it means out the country, not too, uh, too many people are going to be reading that. Uh, or likewise, some authors who write uh, very niche uh, South African fiction, forgetting that the international audience might not understand the South Africanisms and what's a braai and stuff like that, that you have to explain inside the book as well. And so a lot of that um, is what decides success before the writers even, you know, picked up the pen in, in, in many cases. Dave, how do you feel about writers writing under another name? I had... For instance, you get James Patterson, but then Jack Higgins, he writes as Harry Patterson. So if you look at your shelf, the two are next to each other. Do you think that's a plus point? Or? It's, it's a really interesting topic, and it's, it's also quite a, a painful point for African writers. because So the one thing I know about uh, writing under a pseudonym or a pen name is that a lot of African writers change their name because – they don't think they're going to be taken seriously if they don't. You know, so if you if you enter the international market and your surname's a mouthful, um, it unfortunately it you know it's it's something that African authors are painfully aware of, and so a huge amount of success um, or successful writers from Africa write under pen names for that very reason. Uh, you get some people who write content that they just don't want people to know belongs to them. So I, I had uh, you know I had authors writing very risque content where it's a happily married man writing very risque content that he never wanted people to tie back to him. And so the pen name protected him. Or I've had authors who write such different content that you don't necessarily want to cross-pollinate. You don't want you know, an, or, uh, a reader from the one to pick up the book from the other because it might be completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And so an author name gives you that bit of protection where it, it, it's, uh, it helps you segment your potential readership as well. So there's, there's quite a few good reasons, but I, I know the one that stuck out was always, unfortunately, how, how some writers from you know, Africa and South Africa change their names just in order to, to find that mainstream success. Now, there's something I like to do at the shop when I restock the shelves is, you know, to put them in the shelf, but then I'll turn one to show to the front, you know, to see the cover. Cover now, out, when, yeah. When you go into the shop, what attracts you the most? Do you look for the names or do you look at the covers? You're going to hate me. I, I don't generally buy physical books anymore. Uh, I used to be that guy. I, I actually transitioned because my bookshelf got too busy. And I actually couldn't find the books that I was looking for. So I had a, I had a bookshelf fully packed. My books were starting to get damaged. And that's where I made the transition to Kindle. And so while I love the bookstore environment, I love the coffee shops, I love the exclusive books, feel absolutely uh, v and Waterfront kind of sees me quite often sitting inside the bookshop. It's not, if you actually are that passionate about reading, you're going to have a massive bookshelf that you can't often take with you. And so the books I buy, because they're digital, I, I tend to either focus on an author I know I already love or a book that I've been recommended, you know, word of mouth. And that hasn't changed between digital and paperback. Uh, the readers, the most popular way a reader finds a book is still word of mouth, irrespective of whether you're buying through Amazon or your local bookstore. 
So, so yeah, I made the transition, and um, I'm proud to say I've been I've been paper free for the last couple of years. Oh, well done! And for those of you thinking, but hold on, how do you read the book in the bath? Um, I still do. I still do. <laughs> That's wonderful, Dave. So, if you do buy an ebook and you start reading and you buy page three, and the book is not so interesting for you, it's not enticing. Do you stick through it or do you leave it? It's it's the same question, obviously, paper or ebook. What what happens, you know? And I've got this this horrible thing about myself that I'm trying to work on at the moment. Where once I've started, I feel like I have to finish, you know, because you you can't quit, right? Quitting is bad, and that applies to the, how I read books. Where I, I feel so guilty when I start a book that I'm not enjoying it. That what I catch myself doing is actually like avoiding reading because you're not enjoying it, and then you get stuck on the one book for for weeks and weeks and weeks. And so one of my one of my uh, unofficial resolutions is to dedicate maybe an hour towards that book. And if I if I'm not hooked, to put it down and not to feel guilty, because otherwise I tend to scupper my reading efforts by getting uh, you know by procrastinating because I'm actually not enjoying the read. Well, we're going to a music break and then we'll be back. That was Robbie Williams and Kylie Minogue with Kids. We're still chatting to Dave Henderson today in the Maluti FM studio. Yeah, I'm still here. You aren't going to get rid of me that quickly. Well, Dave, we hope to have you back next Thursday. Then we're going to chat about my ebooks again. Any last questions? No, I think it was really cool today to speak about bookshops. I think um, it's it's so so important, especially with how crazy people are going, you know, while being locked up, and you forget that you actually can pop out to that local bookstore, you know, and meet someone and chat with someone, uh, even if they're hidden behind a mask. So uh, as much as I'm a digital fanatic, it's, uh, it's really cool to meet someone who has the experience of the bookstore, of running the bookstore. So uh, from, from a, a digital person to a paper person, thank you. I really appreciate uh, the work you're doing at the bookstore and uh, keep it up. Thank you very much and thanks for coming to the studio today. So but we'll be chatting again next Thursday. Stay tuned between half past two and three o'clock.